Once again, without any fanfare, teasers, or advance notice, this past September 17, DxO released its latest iteration, version 8 of its popular Photolab RAW editor. In this video, we're going to be running through the main new features, and at the end of the video, I'll tell you whether you should upgrade. As someone who's been watching DxO for quite a while, I have to say this was an unusual launch. Unlike in previous years, there was no live presentation where the company would usually take a few minutes to answer viewer questions. This is unfortunate because I'm sure there are a lot of burning questions from customers like why the company has moved to this or that technology or why they haven't fixed certain issues. Whatever the case, all the information was released solely via its website and social media channels. Moving on, let's run through the new features. At the end of the video, I'll tell you whether you should upgrade. The first new feature is improved denoising. For the first time in two years, Photolab gets a denoising upgrade with Deep Prime XD2S. DxO claims XD2S now gives you up to three stops of ISO improvement better than up to 2.5 stops for the previous Photolab 7's Deep Prime XD. To DxO's credit, I have to say it's nice to see the company not rest on its laurels and continue to improve its denoising. DxO could have easily kept the older XD and they would still be far and away the leader in denoising as competitors to this day have still not caught up with Deep Prime XD. Thankfully, DxO doesn't mind competing against itself and by doing so, they further widen their lead, leaving no question that when it comes to denoising, they are still number one. Comparing Deep Prime XD2S with Deep Prime XD, as you can see here, as advertised, XD2S is able to retain much more detail while removing a comparable amount of noise, although you do need to zoom in pretty large to see the difference. The second new feature is real-time denoise previewing. If you've used Photolab long enough, you would know that one of its main pain points is its unintuitive previewing workflow. To illustrate, let's denoise an image with the previous Photolab 7. First, I'll click on Deep Prime XD. Notice, despite clicking the button, the main window never gets updated with a proper result. And that has to do with the intensive computational requirements, which prevents a large preview from being shown at all. To actually view a preview in Photolab 7, you'll need to do the following. First, select the magnifier tool. Next, click on the area to be previewed. Release the mouse. Once that's done, the loop window will be updated with the result. As you can see, it's not the most intuitive workflow. Well, if that is a problem for you, the good news is these shortcomings have been addressed in Photolab 8. Instead of a magnifier tool, DxO has introduced a new loop tool. To demonstrate, first, I'll click on the loop tool button. That shows the loop. And as you can see, the previewing area has been made much larger almost twice as large as the previous loop, making it much easier to see details up close. To preview an area, I'll simply drag my mouse over the location, and voila, the denoise result is shown. No extra gestures needed. You can continue moving your mouse around the image, and as I do that, the loop is automatically updated in real time. A much faster and more intuitive experience akin to moving a magnifying glass over the image. You can even adjust the magnification level to see even more details. The third new feature is Hue Mask. In case you didn't know, Hue Masks allow for the creation of masks based on a specific range of colors. To demonstrate, let's try to make this starfish stand out. While I could use a brush or control point to create the mask, for this case, it is much easier to take advantage of the starfish's unique orange color. I'll click on Hue Mask. I'll click on a representative color. 
and boom, the starfish is selected with just one click. Just like the luminosity mask, simply drag the top handles to expand or contract the color range or the bottom handles to increase or decrease the feathering. Unfortunately though, the mask has some errors. No problem, I'll use the erase tool to clean it up. There, the mask is looking good. Let's increase the exposure and the micro contrast to bring out more details. The fourth feature is the enhanced tone curve. The tone curve now allows you to adjust your images without affecting saturation. To demonstrate, let's brighten this image by using the tone curve. I'll brighten the shadows by making a reverse S. There, the image has been brightened. Unfortunately though, the foreground area is now looking a little bit too red. To remedy this, let's use the new tone curve feature which allows an adjustment to be made without affecting saturation. I'll switch the option from RGB to luminosity. I'll make the same adjustment. As you can see, the adjustment no longer makes the colors oversaturated. The adjustment was limited to only the brightness component, leaving saturation untouched, which might make for a stronger image. The fifth new feature is Compare Images. To demonstrate, let's perform a pretty common workflow, compare a sharpened and unsharpened image. From the browser, I'll select the unsharpened image. Next, I'll open the Compare button dialog. I'll choose Use Current Image as Reference. I'll select the sharpened image. And voila, the two images are side by side. And it even supports various configurations. Pretty nifty. The final improvement has to do with lens softness correction. This has to do with DxO's unique process of making images sharp by compensating a lens's flaws using software. Unfortunately though, in my tests, despite zooming up close, I could not see any discernible improvement. And if there was, it was barely noticeable. So I would not put this feature as an improvement of Photolab 8. So there you have it, five new features of DxO Photolab 8. With all these new features, do I recommend an upgrade? If the criteria is based on just these features alone, I will actually say no. While improved denoising performance and the new Hue mask are welcome additions, I don't think those features are big enough to justify an upgrade from either Photolab 6 or 7. That being said, I will recommend an upgrade on different grounds. The reason I will recommend an upgrade is that in my own tests, I found that Photolab 7's D-Prime XD, when used with lens softness correction, produces ugly artifacts which look particularly bad in faces as you can see here. To mitigate this, I would previously forego D-Prime XD altogether and either revert to the older D-Prime or turn off lens softness correction. Unfortunately, both alternatives cripple Photolab 7, reducing image quality. So if you have this issue, I will recommend Photolab 8, which properly addresses the problem as you can see here. Do note that this recommendation does not apply if you have already purchased Pure RAW 4, which already includes D-Prime XD2, or are satisfied with the previous workarounds I've mentioned. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you'll be upgrading to the new DxO Photolab 8, or what you think of the software features. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.